Magic Weekend a few days away, a new event, a new sorry, a new location, a new stadium. Um, yeah, how, how excited are you about the yeah. turn just a week after Barcelona? Yeah, no, no. Everybody's uh, asking me how excited I am, and uh, the answer is, you know, very much so. I. Um, I uh, had the privilege, I had the good fortune to be out in Barcelona and I just said to people, woke up that morning, coming out of the hotel, walking up to the new Camp, felt like a kid on his first trip to Wembley. And, I, and Anfield, you know, has a similar feel, whilst I've been there lots of times in the context of football, I just think uh, it is something special. There is real heritage, magic, mystique. You know, you only have to go back two or three weeks to see what Anfield's all about. So for us to be uh, borrowing it for a couple of days is, is terrific. I also am really excited about going back to Liverpool and I think it's, uh, it's a brilliant city with its own distinctive personality. And, uh, you know, Anfield, you know, as fans have pointed out, isn't right in the heart of it and it isn't always as easy to get back into the city. We'll do loads of great stuff around Anfield. But, you know, I think just a short trip down the road is, is one of the most famous cities in the world. So if you put all that together, then it is exciting. Obviously, uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's been a somewhat controversial decision because Newcastle is so popular with fans. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about tickets? Over yeah, no. 40,000 plus? No, no, we're... Um, I mean, I don't know if it's controversial is the right thing. I think, you know, every venue has pros and cons. I think Anfield and Liverpool came with a ton of pros. Um, I think it was right for us to look to refresh. I think the whole concept of magic is... It's a celebration, and and, and 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 finding new venues is a big part of that. So I think, whilst fans love the fact that St James's was right in the heart of Newcastle, um, you know, doesn't mean we we're going to be there forever. And I think what we've taken it to is a new city, a new stadium, that isn't quite the same, but you know, loads and loads of benefits and attractions. Um, we're hoping for, you know, a great crowd. Anybody who's going to go to the game will see a great atmosphere. Um, and um, listen, it shouldn't. Um, you know, I, I, I just think the whole experience is going to be hugely positive. So, you know, really excited about it. Yeah, I think it was Jamie Peacock who, who wrote a column looting Magic in Barcelona. I mean, have you yeah. got a decision yeah. for next year for no, Magic? No, and or, uh, you know, and I think we need to we need to reflect on what we've done. I think uh, I've just said to a number of people that Barcelona was amazing, um, but it's all got to be put in the hopper and thought through about why we're doing it, what we want to get out of it and where it's going to take us and I think as a game we don't often find enough time to do all that I think too often we drop in and out and I, and I don't want us to drop in and out of Anfield, not to say that we are committed for 2020 but I think dropping in and out doesn't do anybody any good So, uh, and, and, and yeah we've seen what Newcamp can deliver so I think you know there's lots of positives and assets and things we can work on. I think it's just finding time to join it all up, and that's what you know what we need to do. I mean, even in its own right, going into Barcelona and everybody who went had a great time. One or two people saw Super League for the first time. That's fine. You know, that's terrific. If that's what we want to get out of it, then then, then that's great, and, and and that's a positive. And there's a lot of pluses in that. If it's part of a longer-term strategy about potentially a new club or a new region or a new fan base. Uh, then you know it just needs that thinking and it needs those dots to be joined up. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people would agree. Your previous leadership been very ambitious, but there hasn't been any follow through yeah. or legacy. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 follow through and legacy, I think ultimately has to be right. And as I come, I, can't, I come back though, you know, going in and out and everybody having a great time is not a bad thing. No. But but it, it you know it it doesn't take you a lot further forward. You get some short term media spike. You have. You know, you know, we have had a lot of interest on it, but I've come back and said, you know, it's only as good as the follow through. And ultimately, is it a series of games at the new camp? Is it Barcelona FC adopting a junior rugby league team? Um, you know, uh, is it part of a stimulus to Southwest France? We just need to, I think, you know, answer those questions. You know, I, I, again, if I may, what I say is, you know, the Catalan Dragons should be thanked for, you know, vision and enterprise and courage, but also people probably don't realise just how much hard work goes into this and I said to the guys it felt a little bit like you know every time Everton got to Wembley the whole club stopped for two months and we sorted out tickets, logistics, travel, hotels nothing gets done other than that big event and the Dragons went through that so whilst again you know the outcomes are really positive it needs to be joined up to a strategy or a plan 
but we also need to be aware of just how much work needs to go into it, the resources you need, and the other sacrifices that the things that you don't do as a consequence of it. So, a lot of things to consider, you know. But but, but you know, fundamentally, uh, hugely positive. I, I, what I also look, took away from it is I hadn't realised, you know, the, it's probably sounds a naive thing, the depth of the politics behind all that. So, you know, there was some real. Uh, passion and partisanship behind all that and that's great and that in a positive way sits at the heart of our sport and, and we've talked about what the sport stands for and is it northern but what we saw in southwest France and in northern Spain was uh, part of the fabric of Super League in the sense of this rebellion this partisanship this passion and so uh, you know th that was really interesting to see firsthand, and that's something we can definitely build on Year anniversary the top job. How, how have you seen it now that you've had sort of almost 12 months and you know, um, obviously there's been a lot of changes that you've yeah, yeah. Since coming in? Well, we, we, it's not, I, I'm hugely excited about the future. You know, we, we've started a journey, we've delivered some good things. I'm keen that they aren't just flashes in the pan, that they are the foundations of future growth. We're bought into uh, a number of changes in the way the game looks, uh, change the competition structures. Uh, we're looking at rebranding and strong, solid, cleaner identity. We're about to start preparing for those broadcast negotiations. So there's a, there's a lot happening. And uh, in interestingly, I've just um, had an email through from one of the clubs celebrating today's announcement of Betfred on the long, you know, on the back of a long list of, of, of things that we've done. So, you know, I'm somebody who's, you know, pretty self-critical, always wanting stuff doing tomorrow. Uh, pretty forceful and, and, and you know pride myself on my energy levels but um, I think you know maybe we should reflect on uh, quite a lot of progress and, uh, uh, and and you know you know recognize steps that have been taken and, uh, and but fundamentally you know an exciting journey ahead as a sport do we kick ourselves too hard at I'm probably guilty of that myself but you know sometimes yeah do we expect yeah Listen, yeah, maybe, maybe. Listen, I think we're, um, like all sports, we're being marginalised uh, through other forms of entertainment, but most significantly by the world of Premier League football. And when you're getting marginalised, you, you know, you um, perhaps become too self-critical. You perhaps look to chop and change too often. You perhaps believe there's a silver bullet out there. And as a sport, I think we've often... Um, search for that. I think we know we've got something good and then you get a bit sort of dogmatic about it's good, it's good, it's good and why does nobody else buy into that? You know, and I think we've got to recognise that the, the world of sport is significantly different. It's hugely competitive uh, and probably a little bit more holding our nerve, you know, being ambitious, absolutely, holding our nerve and all getting behind it. Listen, and, and, and critically, unity in the sport is, is absolutely right. Unity amongst clubs, unity with RFL, unity with uh, lower division clubs and community game you know we all have to be bought into uh, you know the sports future is that an important part of your role then, Robert, all, all the politics going on between Super League and rugby football the championship and league one and everyone's got their own interest in that you've almost got to act peacemaker between all these groups yeah I mean I think um, having worked in sport for a long time and you know the politics politics and sport go hand in hand same in Premier League circles uh and, and a constant battle. I think what we can't be is consumed by that. You know, I think what we have to do is set a clear vision of where we're going, um, be you know positive and proactive, and hope our, our you know our hope fundamentally our actions bring people with us. I do think the future is a very very strong elite flagship competition that everybody wants to be in, that stimulates interest in young people who want to play the game, young people who want to come and watch it, and for that interest to not trickle down but that interest to flow out through the game and unless we build a really really strong flagship competition that every really gets behind that people want to be in and, and you know that's the governing body that's junior leagues low leagues community games unless we have that flagship you know we are going to struggle now what we can't do is be consumed by politics you know we, we, we have to get that unity through action and through belief and through vision rather than politics it's not naive I'm not naive enough to think that that 
won't crop up and need dealing with uh, and, and actually you know set a vision and everybody's going to jump on board you know won't be that simple but I think sometimes and people in the game longer than me will know that we have uh, ended up in a quagmire of, of politics and a lack of progress and uh, I think above all things we've got to avoid falling back into that trap again it's going to be a failure, whatever happens, whatever attendance is announced at the weekend. It's important, though, I guess, as a sport that we do take risks, even if they don't always pay. Yeah, and it's... Um, you're right, and, and as a sport, we've done that. Um, and as a sport, we should celebrate that. And it's really interesting, because everybody I've spoke to outside of the game is just talking about uh, Easter, New Camp, Anfield wow something big's happening and then you kind of turn and look internally and it's oh i'm not sure that was the right decision and yeah you're absolutely right we've got to break that mentality and we've got to change it and uh, uh and, and and you know something i've certainly got to lead the charge to change that because uh, unless we all get behind it and we all say isn't it brilliant that a sport you know super league can take uh, has got the uh, has got the foresight and, and, and ultimately the courage to go to this big venue and celebrate it. You know that's a really good thing, and let's get behind it. When you talk about flagship competitions and you look at the NBA, the NFL, the NRL, that seems to be the sort of yeah. the standard bearer. But mm. it seems to me we're sort of looking at some of the issues. Maybe when Morris started in '96, when Super League started, we haven't solved a lot of those. And we're still, you know, looking to, for answers. Yeah. No. Listen. I think. Um, the, the, the blueprints are there all over the world as to uh, a game uniting behind a flagship uh, and the whole sport therefore benefiting. I think the blueprints are there and yeah, we've got to learn from those um, lessons. But, you know, um, we have undoubtedly uh, fallen short, fallen into political uh, turmoil and, and, and listen, all I can say is it's critical we rise above that, look forward uh, and show a bit of ambition. You know, the three words I've used are, you know, uh, younger, more confident and more ambitious. It's why we've kind of moved into Northern Quarter. We've got to show a bit more ambition and ultimately also a bit more confidence because, um, you know, what we've seen today is a, is a third party business, a brand backing our sport with some big numbers uh, and it gives us that you know, pat on the back and that reason to be confident, to have the spring in our steps and undoubtedly as a sport we need, um, you know, we need that energy, we need that swagger, um, particularly as we're competing, as I come back to this, you know, very, very competitive world we're in, unless you really, really believe in what we've got and, and, and you know, stick your chest out and lift your head, then, uh, you know, we're not going to fail. And, and again, I don't think that's easy for a sport that comes from humble and Morris, modest um, backgrounds, you know, it is something we should be proud of our background you know as northern as we are fairly modest and um, and we don't like to stand from the rooftops but and I'm not saying that's what we need to shout from the rooftops but I'm not saying that's something you know we need to do but we certainly need to be confident about what we are and certainly need to uh, sharpen ourselves up and we certainly need to have that bit of swagger about us.